This video describes the academic requirements for the general option of the biology major at Cal State Long Beach and provides some advice. If your major is marine biology or microbiology, or your option within the biology major is organismal biology, biology education, or molecular cell biology and physiology, some of the requirements are different. This video is mainly about the coursework requirements, but if you want more general advice, I made another video you can watch. Links to that are in the description below and at the end of this video. If you're a student at another university and you found this video somehow, some of the information might still be useful, but obviously the exact academic requirements will differ. So without further delay, let's take a look at the degree requirements. Biology is the study of life and builds on foundational concepts in math, chemistry, and physics. In fact, in order to be able to declare a biology major, you have to complete the four courses listed in the box, and three of those are not biology classes. So before we talk about the biology courses you need to take, let's take a look at the courses in those other subjects. For math, you have to take a semester of calculus. You have your choice of Math 119A, which is called Survey of Calculus, and is designed for biology majors, or Math 122, which is called Calculus 1, and is designed for math, physics, chemistry, and engineering majors. Most biology students choose the first one. This course should be taken as soon as possible because it's one of the courses required to declare the biology major. For physics, you have to take two semesters. You have your choice of Physics 100A and 100B, which is called General Physics and is designed for biology majors, or you can take Physics 151, Mechanics and Heat, and Physics 152, Electricity and Magnetism, which are designed for math, physics, chemistry, and engineering majors. Most biology students choose the first set. The main difference between these courses is that the first pair are based on algebra equations that come from calculus, while the second pair use calculus directly within the course. There is no rush to do these since they're not prerequisites for any biology courses. In fact, if you're planning to take an exam like the MCAT or GRE near the end of your studies, it might be useful to take physics later so that it hasn't been so long since you've taken courses with math content. The biology major requires two years of chemistry. The first year is chemistry 111A and 111B, which are general chemistry. The second year is chemistry 220A and 220B, which are organic chemistry lecture courses, and 223A and 223B, which are one credit organic chemistry lab courses. These should be done as soon as possible for several reasons. First, the two semesters of general chemistry are requirements that must be met to declare the biology major. Students are expected to get these both done within the first three semesters on campus. Second, organic chemistry is one of the courses students have the most difficulty with. Taking it earlier gives you more semesters to retake it if you need to. Lastly, Organic chemistry is a prerequisite for biochemistry, so if you plan to take that, then you'll need to get organic chemistry done early so you don't run out of time. This brings us to the major specific degree requirements. These are the courses that students need to complete before they're allowed to officially declare the biology major. Calculus and the first semester of chemistry need to be done in the first year, and that includes the summer. The second semester of chemistry and the first semester of intro bio must be done within the first 60 units. Students must also have an overall GPA above 2.5 and have received at least a C in the four courses shown to declare the biology major. To be completely honest, if you have a hard time meeting these requirements, then majoring in something other than biology might be the best decision for you. Once these requirements are met, then you can really dive into the biology courses for the degree. The biology major includes four lower level core courses. Biology 211 is an introduction to evolution and diversity. This course explores basic concepts of evolution, including simple population genetics, and gives a survey of the different groups of living things. Biology 212 is introduction to cellular and molecular biology. This course covers basic genetics, cellular anatomy, mitosis, meiosis, and the chemistry of living cells. Biology 213 is an introduction to ecology and physiology. Half of the semester is the fundamentals of ecology, and the other half is the fundamentals of physiology. The final lower level core course is biostatistics. This course is an introduction to the basic statistical concepts and tests used in studies done in all the fields within biology. The diagram shows the sequencing of these courses and their relationship to introductory chemistry. Biology 211 must be taken at the same time or after chemistry 111A. Biology 212 must be taken at the same time or after Chemistry 111b, and must be taken after Biology 211. Biology 213 must be taken after Biology 212 and both semesters of General Chemistry. 
Biology 260 can be taken any time after Biology 211 as long as you've also passed a non-remedial college math course. Of course, if you're a biology major, you should have passed calculus by the time you pass Biology 211. I've also included Biology 340 in the diagram because it's one of the few upper-level biology courses you can take before you finish Biology 213. There's also a course that is a prerequisite for a lot of other courses, so it's useful to take it early. There's no need to wait until you take all four of these courses before you take Biology 340. The biology major includes five upper-level core courses. Biology 312 is evolutionary biology, and in this course, you'll revisit and expand upon the ideas from Biology 211 in greater detail. In the square brackets, you can see the prerequisites, which are the three semesters of intro bio and biostatistics. This is the course I teach, so in my completely biased perspective, it's the best one on this list. Your opinion may differ. Biology 340 is molecular cell biology, which is a more in-depth and detailed course on the topics first introduced in Biology 212. As indicated here, you do not need to take Biology 213 or Biology 260 prior to taking this course. Biology 350 is general ecology, which is a much more detailed study of ecology than the introduction in Biology 213. Biology 370 is general genetics and is the only one of these courses that includes a lab section associated with the lecture. That's why it's four units instead of three. Among the courses on the screen, this is the one students typically find the most challenging. Lastly, Biology 480 is a seminar course you take during your final semester. It meets once a week and it's a chance for you to see invited speakers talking about current research projects. You don't have to finish these courses before you take other biology courses, but several of these do tend to act as prerequisites. If you're planning to take advanced courses in molecular biology or genetics, then take 340 and 370 early. If you're planning on taking advanced courses in organismal or environmental topics, you'll want to take 312 and 350 early. All majors are required to take a physiology course. If you're interested in a career in a health-related profession, you'll probably want to take 342 and 342L, which are the physiology courses for human and mammalian physiology. If you're interested in vet school or obtaining a broader perspective on physiology in general, you'll probably want to take 345 and 345L, which are the comparative animal physiology courses. If you're interested in a more molecular or cell biology focus, then you should consider taking Biology 447, which is molecular plant physiology. Note that because 342 and 345 are so similar, once you take one of these, you cannot enroll in the other one. All majors are required to take two organismal diversity courses. One of these courses must be from the first part of this list, invertebrate, entomology, vertebrate, or one of the two plant courses. The second course can be any course from these 10, except for one you've already taken, of course. If your professional school plans include physician's assistant, nursing, or pharmacy, then you should consider taking Biology 311 because those programs typically require microbiology as a prerequisite. Finally, majors must take three additional courses totaling nine units. At least six of the units must come from courses at the 400 level or above, and three units can come from courses at the 300 level. This is where you get to really focus the degree to your personal interest or professional plans. There are a large number of courses, but not all of these are taught every semester or even every year. The department does try to ensure a good mix is available each semester, however. That being said, some courses may not be available, as you may expect, if faculty members receive grants, go on sabbatical, or are pulled into teaching other courses. I recommend looking into the university catalog to identify electives you're really interested in, and making sure to complete their prerequisites as soon as possible so you can take it when it's available. The department has three experiential learning courses available. Up to three units from these courses can count towards the nine units of electives described earlier. These courses are not ones you just sign up for. Enrollment requires making arrangements with a faculty member prior to enrolling. You have to be proactive and seek these opportunities out. Biology 494 is a course that allows a student to receive academic credit for performing internships with local organizations or companies. For more information about this, you can contact the Biology Department's Internship Coordinator. Biology 495 is instruction in laboratory teaching and allows students to earn academic credit for assisting in the teaching of a laboratory course under the supervision of a faculty member. This would usually be a course in which the student did very well and has some kind of mentoring relationship with the instructor. Biology 496 is undergraduate-directed research, and this allows a student to earn academic credit for performing research in a faculty member's lab. The best way to get into this 
is to talk to your fellow students about research they're doing and go to your professors during their office hours. Many faculty members in the department have active research labs and are often looking for dedicated students. Summer courses can be an excellent way to keep on track for time of graduation. The courses listed below are usually taught in the summers. Things can change, however, due to faculty availability, so check in the links below for which courses are being taught in the upcoming summer. If your academic plans include preparation for professional schools in the health professions or veterinary medicine, you'll want to choose some courses carefully. Individual programs may vary in their requirements, but these are some of the very common prerequisites used by a variety of programs. Anatomy, Biology 208, is a prerequisite for physician's assistant, physical therapy, and nursing schools. It does not count towards the major since it's a lower level course. You would take this as an extra course to prepare for those programs. General Microbiology, Biology 311, is a prerequisite for most physician's assistant, nursing, pharmacy, vet school, and clinical laboratory scientist programs. A physiology course, like Biology 342, that specifically has the word human in its name is a prerequisite for physician's assistant, physical therapy, and nursing programs. A physiology course like Biology 345, that specifically does not focus solely on humans, is a prerequisite for veterinary medicine programs. Clinical laboratory scientist programs typically require immunology and hematology. Finally, one semester of biochemistry is a prerequisite for many pharmacy programs, veterinary medicine, and clinical laboratory scientist programs. These are just the more common prerequisites. If you have specific programs or schools you're interested in, you should identify what their requirements may be. Individual programs may require less or more than what is indicated on the screen. Here are a few final pieces of advice. First, contrary to what many people say, there's generally no need to rush your GE courses. Finishing GE courses is usually not a problem. In fact, most students find the three plus one schedule, that is three science classes and one GE, works best to balance academic progress and the workload during the semester. Obviously, this is easier to do if you still have unmet GE requirements. There's no need to rush through them all at the beginning. In general, you should always be planning ahead. For example, you should identify the upper division courses you're interested in and then look up their prerequisites to make sure you take them early. You can also plan ahead and look at professional school requirements and recommendations to choose GE courses that match. Instead of just treating your GE courses as a checklist, you can be strategic with them. Keep in mind that academic assistance like tutoring and supplemental instruction is available at the SAS Center, the Horn Center, and a variety of other offices around campus. Also keep in mind that other kinds of assistance are available at the Student Health Center and the Counseling and Psychological Services Office. There is no shame in getting whatever kind of assistance you need to get if you're having difficulty with your courses or your health. You're a student at this university and the facilities here are for you and for your needs. Here are the requirements for the major all laid out in one list. Take a look at them to get a sense of what your major encompasses. I've included links below to a number of campus resources that may be very useful. Congratulations on making the excellent decision to be a biology major at Cal State Long Beach. I hope you find success here and the courses you take for the degree both expand your mind and help you find professional success in the future. The website listed here is the one for the biology department. And as I mentioned, there are a lot of useful links in the description below.